Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 54 of your Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf, talking to you from the carpool lane. <laughs> I really hate the carpool lane. You have to be here so early, and it's ridiculous, really. I don't have a title yet for this podcast and I did hear that some of the podcasts are very difficult to hear um I know that last week's was I got a message that it was so um if you run across one where the volume goes so low that you have to turn yours way up and you still can't hear it very well let me know because I can run that through the audacity software and make it louder and I apologies for that And today's may be the same because I'm doing it in my car and so I don't have the software with me. So just let me know if you ran, if y'all ran across a problem. I don't listen back to them because that's incredibly boring (laughs) because I just recorded it. So I don't want to hear it again. (laughs) So today I'm talking about the phenomena that we all experience where we get a windfall of money right as the, you know, kitchen sink or kitchen plumbing blows up, or we need a t- you know, we blow out a tire, or the example this morning from my uh, daily money Voxer group was, um, you know, the dogs having surgery. So what I want to point out to all of us is that uh, we're the ones doing it, right? So we're the ones bringing in the sudden influx of money right as the dog needs surgery, right as the uh, car breaks down. You know, we're the one doing that. When we're still functioning as if it's outside of our control, we feel like we got handed a present that, and then we had to throw it away. (laughs) Even though those are the things we need, right? We get a windfall of money. We don't really want to spend it all on the car. And we feel like it's a mean trick, right? Oh, here's a windfall. Now go spend it all on your car. That's not fun. We like having a car. And also we would like to go get our hairs done or whatever. Get our toes painted. So we feel like we don't have control over that process. Uh, Or we feel like there's somebody, you know, doling out the money only when we really need it only when it's an emergency and we can't have five hundred dollars to go to barnes and noble and go berserk buying a million books oh as if as if five hundred dollars would buy you a million books but you know what i mean like wouldn't that be the funnest thing to take five hundred dollars and go to a bookstore and buy as many books as you want like you need a wheelbarrow to carry them out that'd be the funnest thing So what's the difference? How come we can pull it in for a a blown out tire, but we can't pull it in for a trip to the bookstore? The only difference is our judgment about those two things. We have no restriction on taking care of the car or getting surgery for the dog or buying glasses for our kids or whatever it is. Like we, we will pull that money in because we have to. But we treat having fun as optional because we haven't yet made the switch that fun is the way we make money. In human design, the hardest thing for people to learn is that, except for manifestors, everybody else, manifesting generators, generators, projectors, and reflectors, we all have to wait. We have to use our heads as they're meant to be used as receivers for information flip-flop that information over in our brains and create imagery and visualizations with them, which then triggers emotions, which then we can evaluate in our heart and then activates the magnetism structures, the magnetic monopole. You don't need to worry about that term if you're not familiar. Um, You can Google it. And then we need to hold that. This is a story I've shared in several places that a couple of years ago I was driving at night and I saw this image in the dark of an idea that then had to be held while the particles of the universe, the neutrino stream, the magical watsits, that little teeny pieces that come together and, and form 
things that then materialize and come to us, um, we don't hold that idea steady. Then when I found human design, I was like, oh, okay, that's further detail about how that process works. We don't hold it steady. We don't plant, the image I saw was a staff planted in the ground, and we don't hold that, in, we don't plant that staff and then hold it steady. We will plant that staff and hold it steady when something's going wrong outside of us that we know that we have to fix. We will fix our car, even if we have to sell things to do it, because without our car, we think we can't make money. You know, we have to get to the job. We have to do the things. So we will find a way. Do you feel the difference? Like we'll find a way to get the money so the dog can have a medical procedure or one of our kids. We'll find a way. But will we apply that same manage, that same amount and type and style of energy to I will find a way to get a massage? Because massages make me happy and the happier I am, the more money I make. We don't because we don't have that yet. But that is what we're moving toward. Now, my mom and I have been talking about for years, I'm going to say at least four years my mom and I have been talking about, and other, I've shared at various places, but it's been a consistent conversation with my mother and I that the old ways of manifesting don't work. And we haven't been able to figure out, figure it out. Um, all the things I used to do to make things happen, to create things in my world, don't work. They, they just don't. They either blow up in my face or they just don't do anything at all. And it's a big waste of energy. Well, uh, this year when I've been studying human design, I was like, okay, I see that. I get it, that we are shifting from, Karen Curry Parker calls it shifting from a monetary system to a, a, a currency of money to a currency of well-being, that our well-being is our currency. The more well-being you have, the more currency you have. The happier you are, the more magnetic you are to the resources that you need and want. There's a hitch there in the need and the want. We, we, we make it okay to need the money and to draw that in. We don't make it okay to just want new shoes or something new and sparkly and glittery. We label that frivolous. And in the minute our money dries up, we start slamming doors, right? Okay, we're going to slam the Netflix door. We're going to slam the new shoe door. We're going to slam the massage door and the haircut door. We're going to slam all the doors because we're running out of money and we want to plug the leak. We want to shut the door to the money going out. And what does that do? It makes us further restricted and even tighter and more miserable. And so more money goes out and we have a very hard time bringing it back in because now we're so unhappy that our energy is completely offline and that those staffs that we planted in, planted in the ground, we've knocked them loose. They're laying on the ground now completely useless. Currency of well-being, currency of happiness, currency comes in the form of joy. One of the hardest things that's happened for me, it, learning I'm a projector in human design, that's my type, and I have mostly open centers. There's nine centers or chakras, and only three of mine are defined. That means six are open sponges, bringing in energy, really, you know, whatever. Um, but what that means is I have to make sure that I'm clear, grounded, and having loads of fun. And I've proven that to myself in this, this year, 2019, that when I do let it all go, when I do throw my hands in the air and go do something to entertain myself, I'll come back and, and I will have, you know, booked a new client or something will happen or some money will come in. Now, I haven't been able to fully believe that until most recently, recently meaning the month of October. I'm still teeter-tottery wobbly around that. But it is true, the more fun I have, the more money I make. And Dana Wilde's been saying this for a long time. <laughs> Lots of people have, right? Lots of people have. This is nothing new. But what's happening is, here's how I framed it in a conversation this morning.
It's like when you, if you've ever worked for a government agency or a corporation that uses a database. Hopefully you, you can relate what I'm talking about here. Um, you get notices, right? You start getting memos. Hey, we're switching the database. We're switching to a different database. We're switching from this to that thing. You need to come to a training and then you'll get, you know, then nothing happens and you'll get an email with all these times and dates and you're supposed to go to a training so that when the new database rolls out, you know what the hell you're doing. And we're like, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. I'm busy. I don't have time for that. I need to go do this other thing. And we, and we blow it off, right? And we blow it off and we ignore it. And then one day we come to work, our old database is gone and the new damn database is there. And we're like, what? in the ever loving fuck is this I can't even turn it on where do I log in I don't even know my old login doesn't work where's the old familiar screen where's the place that I put in my my credentials so I can get into the database everything's different it's a different color it's a different shape all the forms are different ah, you know we freak out we freak out but we got the notices over and over and over and we ignored them now we don't know what the hell to do now all our old database methods no longer work we can't even get in can't even log into the system you see we've been being told for decades this is not new i think we you know we really lost our way with the industrial revolution and now the information age and now we're going into a different age of Aquarius or whatever whatever is happening here it's a huge transition and we haven't been going to the training <laughs> we've been skipping we haven't been read the book that we've been given on how to use the new database all we want is our familiar, let me log in, let me get my thing done, let me get out of here. We want the familiar things that we don't have to think about, but that's not working. I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's multiple themes of conversations of my intuition seems different, or it's gone completely, or, uh, you know, I know someone who lost her intuition for a couple of years, and then it came back, but it was totally different. I'm seeing conversations and I'm experiencing as well greater awarenesses of other energies, some of which I'm not particularly happy about. But I've just accepted the fact that we are hearing and seeing and receiving intuitive information louder, faster, easier. And now we have to learn new levels of discernment as to what we want to see and hear from energetically and also in person, right? People are leaving. Relationships are transforming. Then there's gaps where there's no friendships or no love relationships. And you're just like, what the hell? It's all different. And the more we hang on to and whine and complain, and you know I love me a good whine and complain session, but the longer we do that, the further delayed we are in learning how to use the new database, in learning how to log in, enter our information, input the data so that we can spit out the outcome. How we put our, how we log into the universe is different now. And we're not paying close enough attention to that because we're running around screaming that the database doesn't work and we can't even log in. I hear a lot and I'm guilty of it as well, but I used to do this, but I, it used to work like this. And I posted a, a piece of poetry on my Facebook page yesterday about saying goodbye to the gone things they're gone and we have to say goodbye to them and that's not we're not we're not great at that we're not good about saying this thing is gone let me say a formal goodbye I've recommended to a lot of people lately do a formal goodbye death of your business death of your marriage death of your 
you know, your toddler is now a teen, but you never said goodbye to the toddler. And so now you're headbutting and in the struggle with your teenager, you got to say goodbye to the toddler first so that you can say, oh, Bobby Sue ain't a toddler no more. She's a teenager. And now I need to say goodbye to the little girl so I can welcome this new person here. That's totally different. We've got to say goodbye to the way we used to do business so that we can say, okay, well now what? So that we can open the doors, open more doors instead of closing them when we see things going away. It's totally normal. If you're in the bathtub and the water starts draining out, it's totally normal to scramble to try to plug the drain. But it doesn't work. That water needs to flow. Your money needs to flow. Your creative endeavors need to flow. You will not open and start a business these days that's going to be the same business 40 years from now. You might do that business for one year and it might die and you have to make a new one. Things are rapidly flowing, rapidly changing. We've gone from a slow, lazy river to a big white water river, and we're trying to pretend that it's still the low, long-term, slow flow river, and we're getting beat the hell up by the rapids. And it's okay. It's just different. Nothing's wrong here. It's just different. And we've got to acknowledge the difference, say goodbye to the slow, lazy river days, and gear up and jump into these white waters and have a blast. Let the water toss us around. Let things be in flux and bounced all around. And, and do like a little kid on a, uh, in a bouncy house right? They're just getting flung all over the place. You don't know. They don't know. I've never been in a bouncy house because I wouldn't do that (laughs) because I'm not ready to fully let go of control yet, right? Kids are better. You can throw them in a bouncy house and they, you know, they don't know when they're going to be flung up in the air. They don't know where they're going to land and they're screaming, laughing the entire time. They're bouncing off each other and ending up banging around in there. They don't care. They're having a blast. We can do the same thing. Oh, I can't log into this database. I, I, it's different. Logging into the database now means getting in your body, getting in your body. Transcendence is a no, no. We cannot transcend our emotions. We cannot stay in observer mode. We back up. We witness, we observe, we dive back in. We back up, we get our, we look at the big picture, we go macro, we go, okay, okay, I see where this is leading to that. Then we dive back in micro. We do both. There's a quote. Oh, so this new database, let me try and stay on track here for a second. The new database method is getting into the body. That's how you log into the universe. You get in your feelings and you strip off the labels of them being good, bad, acceptable, unacceptable. Yes, no. They're just feelings. They're just energies. You dive in. When you dive in, the wave comes in and then it goes back out and everything settles down. And then you can say, What do I want to think about that's going to create an image, that's going to create an energy, that's going to create an emotion that then I'm going to evaluate, yes, no, according to my authority in human design, or if you don't, if you're not into human design, just is it a full body? Yes. But you're going to wait, wait until it's a full body yes and then you can start visualizing every day on purpose hello deliberate creation on purpose thinking the thoughts that create the image that create the emotion that you then fill your aura with you decorate your aura with the things the energies that you want more of so you see money run out you add more money The water's going out of the bathtub. You add more water. 
You don't stop the drain and try to hang on to the dirty water that you've got. You just add more water. Maybe you add five faucets to your tub. So as it's going out, it's continually full and you cre- you create a nice equilibrium there. As money's going out, you go, oh, it's running out of the bank account. I wonder where else it can come in. So you turn around, you stop staring at the money running out of your bank account and you turn around and go, what's fun? What's beautiful right now? What can I focus on right now? I wonder how many more ways I can receive money. How many more faucets can I turn on to my bathtub? How many more doors can I fling open to my house that let money walk in? And while I'm waiting for it, I'm entertaining myself with whatever's fun for you. I've It's colder now, so I picked up back up my crochet and stuff. I don't like to crochet in the summer because Georgia, um, hot as fuck. And so I've picked that back up and I'm, you know, I'm doing wood carving now, which I love. I'm picking up the things while I'm waiting in between client sessions, in between course creation, in between posting. I'm entertaining myself. You wait and you have fun while you're waiting. And then the money appears and you're like, oh, hey, that's cool. I got the money for my blown out tire. Now I wonder how I can strip away some more stories to also have money for a, a really nice massage at, at a super duper spa where it's very beautiful. I wonder how I can make money for a tire no different than money for a massage. Money for dog surgery no different than money to go get my hair done, go to go get my hair blown out or whatever is fun for you. To go for me it would be like go buy a new Galaxy Note. I would love to go buy a, a portable microphone so that when I'm podcasting in the carpool lane it sounds a little better for y'all. Okay, I ran across this quote by I'm going to butcher this name, I'm sure, Tillard De Chardin, T E I L H A R D, first name, De, De, D E, Chardin, Chardin, C H A R D I N. I'm sure I screwed that all up. Anyway, the quote was We are not human beings trying to become spiritual. We are spiritual beings trying to become human. That was like a lightning bolt across my energy today. We are not human beings trying to become spiritual. We are spiritual beings trying to become human. This is what we've been saying for years. Get in the body, embodied practice, somatic therapy. Human design is all about getting in your body. It's your body's life, not your mind or your personality or your soul it doesn't belong to you it belongs to the body and if you'll let the body be in control if you'll do everything in your power to make your body happy feed it good food give it fun give it pleasurable experiences you won't believe how your life will take off i'm seeing it happen i'm experiencing it We have to give up this idea that we can transcend the body, that the body is just, you know, this albatross that we have to deal with. It's not. It is how we log in and experience the new database. We log in by getting deep in our body and feel the feelings and imagine the cool things that create the good emotions. And we are 100% responsible for that process. Nobody else can do it for us. Nobody else. Nobody else. You're the one that brought in the money for the tire. So you're the one that can bring in the money for a trip to the bookstore or to go buy some new wood carving tools or whatever, you know, whatever is your fancy for the day. You're the one doing both. The only difference is the spin on it. The only difference is the story that gets put on it, that this is okay and that's not. It's okay to pull money out of thin air for a tire. It's not okay to pull money out of thin air and go spend it on a, you know, a new book or several new books. That's not okay. But if we would shift that, if we would put our focus on pulling in money for a massage or pulling in money for a new Uh, cell phone just because you want a new cell phone I don't need a new cell phone 
I just want one. I love. I miss having a Galaxy Note. And the Note 10 is out, and it is fancy, and I want it. But I won't put the same energy into pulling in the money for that phone, even though the price is redonkulous. Doesn't matter. We got to strip those stories off. We have to give just as much attention to pulling in money for the things that make our bodies happy. Remodeling your home, getting a new car that's more comfortable, buying new clothes that are more beautiful and make you feel like a queen. If we could shift that to our priority, then we would be pulling resources in for those things and the tires and the dog surgery and the house remodeling or whatever needs to happen. It's only the stories. The only thing different between the two is our judgment. That's it. We have to stop looking and wishing for the old database. We've got to say goodbye to it. It's gone, honey bunnies. It's gone. The old database is gone. The old ways you you used to log in are gone. The old ways you used to bring in customers and clients and money and whatever, whatever, those ways are gone. Say goodbye to them. Have a funeral. Have your moment of, oh, I wish I had my familiar database that was so easy for me. The new database will get easy too. You know this if you've ever gone through this in an agency. They bring in the new database. Nobody paid any attention. The people who went to the training didn't really pay attention either. And they give you a book, but, you know, most people won't go step by step and follow it. I never had these problems when with database changes because I didn't care. And so I just wanted to do my work. So I did pay attention and it was a lot easier for me. But then I would end up training everybody else who didn't pay attention. <laughs> and it's not working for me the same way because I have more stories about this. But the new database will become familiar too. Someone will teach you or you'll slow down and figure out how to log in. Logging in is getting into your body and really listening, really paying attention to the food your body wants, which might change from day to day. I've shared with you all my two-week quesadilla streak that then went on a month-long Oreo thing. I only eat once a day usually. So I follow my intuition on what that what's going to be eaten in that two to four hour window all weekend it's been vegan i don't know where that came from my body was just like i don't want meat anymore and i expected to miss it and i expected to grieve it and it's like no i i'm a big beef eater i was vegetarian years ago but it's been decades and now i'm like "Mm, i don't want that meat i don't want that chicken i don't want that fish i don't want any of it Then this weekend, it was like, hey, be vegan this weekend. Okay. It's going great. I feel wonderful. Tomorrow, it might be another two weeks of quesadillas. I don't know. It's the same. Now, intuitive eating is familiar and fun for me. Learning the new database for manifestation where well-being is what determines how much money you have is also going to be uncomfortable and disorienting and unfamiliar as fuck until we say goodbye to the other one and quit trying to make the new database function like the old one. Quit trying to log in with our old credentials and log in with the new ones, which means have fun, get in the body password just for fun one two or whatever you know you have to you must have a symbol so how can you say goodbye to the old familiar ways that you used to create you used to tap into your intuition you used to get your information and just drop it all and say all right i've said goodbye the old way is done now what I'm open. Now what? I'm willing. I don't know how, but I'm willing. 
my if you're if you want to join us on Patreon at the $33 level, you get a daily group where every single day we're talking about this using the one command process which you can google. But we say I don't know how every day we say repeatedly different variations of I don't know how fill in the blank. I only know that it is so and I am fulfilled. I don't know how to manifest in this new energy that we're transitioning into and we're all feeling the pinch of. I only know that I have figured things out before and I'll figure this out too and I am fulfilled. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. I don't know how and that's okay. Nothing's gone wrong. We've just been given a new database that we have been told about for years. You got to be happy. You got to feel good. You got to pay attention to your body. And we were like, blah, 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 la, 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 fingers in our ears, binging on Netflix, scrolling on the Instagram. <laughs> right. And now it's here and we're, and we're acting like nobody told us. We were told we didn't implement it. And that's perfectly human. But now we know, now we can back up and look at the macro. What's the big theme happening here? The old is dying. We're in transition to the new. We already have the instructions, but we have to start logging in to the database in a new way. We have to recognize that the database we're logging into, our experience of it is going to be different. It's going to be felt. It's going to be sensate. It's going to be sensual. It's going to require you to feel below the neck. It's going to require you, ooh, it's so horrible. You're going to have to dance and sing and play and laugh. Ew, that's the worst. Ew, I don't want to dance and sing and play and laugh. That's not work. That's not serious. Can you see how ridiculous we're being? We're fucking ourselves over and then being like, what's going on? <laughs> we're doing it to ourselves. That's the good news. We're doing it to ourselves so we can knock it the fuck off now and get on the, our business, get on the way. Logging in through daily meditation, logging into the universe by saying, hey, precious body, that is the reason I get to be here. Hey, precious body, that is the divine having an experience in the world. Let me snuggle down deep in you like a comfy pair of sweatpants. Let me pull you on like a, and wrap you around me like a big fluffy blanket. Let me dig in deep to this human experience and stop trying to transcend it and escape it and make it do things that are out of date that are now obsolete and that's why they don't work you're not broken you're not doing it wrong you just haven't yet caught up to the fact that you have a new system that needs to be implemented now which might require you to say goodbye to the old and have a little cry about it and step back into beginner's mind and then get familiar with this new one so then in 30 or 40 years, when it changes again, we can all go through this again, <laughs> right? That's the joke. It never stops changing and we never stop wanting it to stop changing. And that's all okay. It's all okay. It really is. So my invitation to you is, first of all, please join us on Patreon. You get a shit ton of stuff for $33 a month. Like it is really just absurd and more is coming. And there's other levels. Like if you really can't do $33 a month, and I totally understand that, come in at the $3 level and at least get in with us on the book club. We're going to talk about Tosha Silver's book, It's Not Your Money, starting in November, late no about mid-November, I think, whenever I get back. I'm taking a little vacation. When I come back, I will we'll start up the book club. So even at the $3 level, you get to ask one question a month, and you get to be on the live streams in the, the book club. But at $33 a month, you get so much more than that. You get to hear from me 10 minutes every day, and it works. 
It absolutely works. People's money changes. Their relationship changes. Everything changes. It might take more than one month. It might take three or four months. But it does work. And it's a dollar a freaking day. Come on now. Get on in here. Join us. We're having so much fun. Okay. So enough of that. Enough for now. Uh, please feel free to send me a message, info at thatmichellewolf.com. If you want more details, if you want to know what's going on, uh, programs that you can participate in, My uh, the Patreon is patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash michellewolf11. Two L's, two F's, two ones. And then everything's up to date on the website. The Hearth and Home is open now. That's 40 days of daily support for you through the holidays, which is such a fun group. This is the third year in a row that we're doing it, and it's so much fun. So comforting and cozy and wonderful. That's open to you. And then um, the big, big course is coming in January. You might want to check that out too, but you can find all that on the website. In the meantime, get in your body so that you can log into the universe and start to see where your stories are so that you can rewrite them and have a different experience with this new energy that's come forward and now we have to start using it. We we can't lumber along and flounder around out here trying to use the old ways. Done, gone, goodbye, hello, new database. All right, think less, feel more, talk to you later. Let me know if there's a sound problem with the podcast. Sometimes I can fix it. Sometimes I can't. And if somebody wants to donate one of the really nice portable microphones, that would be welcome. And I would appreciate it greatly. All right. That's all I got. Talk to you later.